Greetings, uh, YouTubers out there. This is Wirtech. I just wanted to talk about some um, different materials today. Um, you know, I haven't been doing too many pieces, but it seems like, you know, if I haven't flint napped in a while, I feel the need to do some just some stuff, even in, even if it is cold outside. So, here's a couple examples of some recent work. Um, it's kind of standard stuff. It's just sort of trying to thin out. Uh, Chert, and these are really two examples of uh, Texas uh, chert or flint. This is the uh, oil chert, and here's just some, I would guess, uh, regular chert. Um, I don't know, there's times when uh, you know the uh, percussion work, you get these nice broad flake scars, and, and I really like them. You know, the piece itself is a little on the thick side. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, but um, it seems like that's what I normally do. I'd stop at some point and go, what do I do now? Well, I, I, like I said, I like the flake scars of, of uh, some of these materials earlier in the uh, production. And so sometimes I like to stop and just go, hey, you know, this is just a good worry stone and I'll, I'll leave it as such. But um, these are examples of natural materials. And, you know, a lot of my videos that you, you, you see a lot of this work done. Um, natural materials, of course, are great. Um, but... You know, there's a whole class of what I would describe as, I guess, unnatural man-made materials. And so I have a few examples here. Um, and I'm going to start off with this. This hasn't been worked. This is a piece of fused fiber optic. And sometimes people don't really understand what fused fiber optic is. Um, fused fiber optic is literally you take fibers and bundle them together and then fuse them together with heat. And so what's interesting about this material is when you flake it, you know, I'm sure you've seen examples out there of the material itself after it's flaked, it looks metallic, and you can see it's got kind of a metallic sheen. Well, fused fiber optic material, and let's see if I can get a good view of this, it's a lined material, and so you can see from this little uh, magnet I've got here with some lettering on here how how well the, this aligned fiber actually transfers information, and so you can see that, you know, that phone number f on, this, uh, on this magnet gets transferred to the top, and so it is really pretty cool stuff and so um, you know the the reality is is when you flake it what you're seeing is the outside of the fiber and since the fiber tends to have um, really good uh, uh, optical uh, properties what you're seeing is just a reflection it looks metallic and so if you look under a um, um, magnifying glass or, or under a microscope you'll see the individual fibers and so in this case you can see that the fibers are running from the top here down and you wouldn't be able to see this image being transferred if they weren't aligned um, in, a, in a way that was uh, true so the 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 fibers are all uh, you know lined perfectly so that you can transfer the image to the top now um, you know and this stuff is really cool and I, you know part of me wants to avoid actually uh, you know snapping into this thing because it is so cool just just because of those optical properties and you know you can see my finger on the other side and it's I don't know I really like this material but um, I just wanted to show you know what it is um, and uh, you know just exactly why this stuff this material is really special now for optical purposes it's kind of old technology and so I, I assume that's why it's now in the hands of flint nappers um, there really isn't any strong need to make this material any, anymore, and I know that the source of the uh, manufacturing has moved to different countries, and the quality has dropped over the, the ages, and so this is actually a really good quality piece of, of uh, fused fiber optic material. And so I think I'm going to wait on using this stuff until, I don't know, until I'm the master or at, at the craft or something. But here's a, a, an example of neodymium. Uh, dope glass, and I've mentioned this stuff before. I, I wanted to see what it would look like when it was tumbled. It, it has kind of a nice frosted look, and I think when it's frosted like this, it conveys the color better. Let's see if I can view this right. Well, anyway, so it's supposed to turn kind of a lavender color in sunlight, and then under uh, fluorescent light, it looks more bluish. Um, but that was originally used in as a laser filter and it's not really used so much anymore and so the reason it's called laser gem is because presumably it was a laser filter and so um, you know you rename it for what you're using it for now this material here this is special this is material it's called ferrite and uh, ferrite is again kind of a man-made ceramic material and um, what's really cool about this is as far as I know this is the world's only 
ferrite uh, arrowhead. And so it's kind of got a metallic pewter finish to it. And um, this is what's kind of absurd about this material. It's um, uh, radar absorbing. This is the world's only, at this point, world's only um, radar absorbing arrowhead. So now here's the problem with it. It weighs about twice as much as an equivalent piece of flint. So this stuff is so significantly heavier than an arrowhead that you would make from this that it would probably uh, make a very quick arc to the ground. So, but um, I love the absurdity of it. A pure pewter colored arrowhead uh, made out of ferrite. Um, and uh, you know, I'm laying the claim out there. This is the world's only, first and only at this point, um, radar absorbing, uh, uh, arrowhead invisible to radar um, it's uh, it's one of the cooler materials that uh, I've come across and so um, ferrite is a uh, you can see examples of ferrite uh, online but uh, the most common uh, way to find it is actually it's usually in your computer cables it's a, a cylinder that the uh, cable runs through and it reduces uh, some of the signal noise that you get and uh, so anyway um, to be very specific about this material it's, um, let's see, it's a nickel-zinc uh, mixed iron oxide. And uh, so, uh, like I said, this is probably one of the more unique materials that I've ever flaked. And it's actually fun to find something that's new that hasn't, been, that hasn't really been shown online yet. Um, I would say, though, that in terms of, com you know, comparing the flakeability to the workability to, say, something like a, a flint or natural material, this material it's so heavy it, it it feels as heavy as the fiber optic material but it flakes more like um, oh like um, well let me think about this uh, uh, it's a really soft material and it, it you know the flakes don't dry very easily so it's it, it tends to be a little tricky I guess the, the best material to compare to would be opal and so uh, opal you know it's it's somewhat brittle it's a little tricky to flake and so this is the same way except it's got the weight the density of something like a fiber optic so here you go this is uh i'm, I'm putting the claim down there and we'll see if i'm right i'm sure somebody will come along and say oh i made a uh, a ferrite arrowhead 20 years ago you're 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 full of it so if that's the case uh i'm sure somebody will let me know anyway that's about it so i just wanted to show some examples of the natural materials but also the unnatural the man-made you know um i kind of like these materials simply because they are so different and in a lot of ways to make the hobby interesting you've got to you know search for the unusual or at least try to expand your horizons a little bit when it comes to working these things which isn't to say you know finding a good uh, piece of chert or flint isn't fun but you know this is the sort of thing that it's like hey go for something unusual work some un you know something new and, and and see see what happens anyway that's about it. This is Wartax signing off. Bye.